Hello, my merciful brothers and sisters. It is I, Mr. Mercy, bringing you another video with some Heroes of the Storm gameplay. And I'd like to welcome you to my BlizzCon 2016 wrap-up reactions video. Uh, I'll be doing videos like this for many big gaming events such as E3 and PAX. I used to do these uh, on my old channel, Icy Gaming, uh, back, you know, when I, was, when I was just really covering E3. But... I have a lot of fun doing these, and uh, I will be going over literally everything announced at these events and giving my thoughts and opinions about them along the way. So without further ado, let's get started. So opening ceremony, of course, is where we got most of the announcements for BlizzCon. Uh, after a really touching introductory video celebrating Blizzard's 25th anniversary, uh, Mike Morheim, which is the uh, president and CEO of Blizzard Entertainment, uh, he took the stage. Now, before any new news about games, uh, Mike announced that Alan Adham, who was one of the original co-founders of Blizzard Entertainment, uh, has recently rejoined the company. Now, this was a really huge surprise to me because I know how much old talent from Blizzard has since left the company over the years. Um, and to see such an important, you know, an influential figure uh, who this guy was like uh, presided over the release of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, I mean some of their biggest franchises. Um, to see him coming back uh, at this stage of Blizzard's life, life cycle after being gone for 12 years, that was, that was pretty exciting. Uh, so this may have been Blizzard's answer to Chris Medson retiring from the company, but that's just my speculation at this point. So, another interesting tidbit that Mike mentioned was that the Warcraft feature film, which came out this past June, became the highest grossing movie based off of a video game ever made. That's insanely impressive, and I know a lot of people disliked the Warcraft movie and said it was kind of eh, but I watched it and I thought it was pretty good, and it did have some like really, really amazing visual effects in it. I loved it a lot. So, next, as tradition, Mike unveiled the 2016 Make-A-Wish charity pet for World of Warcraft, and that was Mischief the Fell Kitty. And uh, I thought Brightpaw from last year was adorable, but goddamn, <laughs> Mischief the Fell Kitty is ten times more ador adorable. It outclasses Brightpaw in literally every way. So I'm hoping I can actually afford uh, to get him this holiday season in World of Warcraft. Um, of course, I still have to get the World of Warcraft Legion expansion and get my subscription all paid up and stuff, but I'm hoping I can get them. So Mischief the Fell Kitty will launch in World of Warcraft Legion on December 1st. And as usual, all proceeds from sales of Mischief through December 31st will go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So finally... It was time for some Overwatch news. Now, personally, this was the most exciting part of the convention for me. Um, the other announcements were interesting in their own right, but for me, this was the highlight and the pinnacle of BlizzCon. So, it started out with Mike Morheim showing off a video of Overwatch's global launch this year and showing like how many countries celebrated its release and what they did all over the world to celebrate it. Uh, and then, in that video, we got to see Inside Blizzard HQ uh, showing everybody getting ready for the servers to go live on launch day. And as server problems started to arise, uh, Jeff Kaplan stood over the engineers as they worked on a solution, and the screen started to glitch. Now, it was funny because as I was watching this, I was convinced that I was just having stream issues, um, because uh, earlier that day, when I had been watching the uh, World of Warcraft Arena Championships, um, when I had my uh, stream quality set to auto, it, I was getting a lot of that stuttering that I was seeing in this video uh, that they were showing for Overwatch. And so when it happened, when it first started, I just thought, oh god, you know, my, my quality is, my stream quality is too high, it's stuttering, I gotta turn it down. But when Jeff Kaplan started to uh, really, like, stutter and get out of hand and the glitching got really crazy, um, I realized that it actually wasn't due to technical problems on my end, and I realized exactly what was going on and who was doing this. And myself, along with the crowd, went 
absolutely nuts when Sombra's logo flickered up on the screen and the video eventually was interrupted by a brand new cinematic short for Overwatch called Infiltration. Sombra was here. The leaks had been confirmed and we finally got to see her in action. I was screaming with excitement and my jaw was like just dropped to the floor. I couldn't believe how epic this uh, reveal was. So the short revealed some of Sombra's abilities uh, as well as like about her personality showing her showing us that she's like a sassy yet playful kind of girl. Um, as well as a double agent, so she was working with Reaper and Widowmaker in a talent operation to assassinate uh, Miss Volskaya, which is the pr uh, which is the head of the Volskaya Industries company. Um, but near the end of the short, she reveals that she has her own motives. Um, and Zarya also makes a cameo at the very end, but eh, Sombra's more interesting. So if you guys want to hear more about Sombra and what, what she's about, her abilities and everything, what I think more about Sombra, I'll throw an iCard on screen now for you to check out my character breakdown video of Sombra. And Sombra will be hacking her way into the PTR this week. So the next bit of Overwatch news came in the form of a new control map called Oasis and it takes place in a Middle Eastern desert that has been terraformed into a tropical city. So this map will also have the unique addition of jump pads added to it that adds a whole new level of verticality uh, to the map. And I gotta say, the map looks absolutely gorgeous, even in its early concept phase. I mean, we didn't get to see any gameplay on it, but that's because it's probably not close to being finished yet. So I think that this could easily be one of my favorite maps in the well game. Done. I, I love uh, when games take me to tropical settings. That was kind of one of the biggest reasons why I bought Dead Island in the first place, is I love the like the huge tropical setting of it. So I think I'll feel right at home in this new map. And Oasis will be hitting the PTR next month in December. So in addition to Sombra, it was also announced that Quick Play will be indeed getting a one hero limit in the next big content patch that will, you know, of course also include Sombra. Uh, however, to still cater to those who enjoy having no hero limits as well as those who uh, love the weekly brawls and those who want new game modes and stuff, Blizzard is introducing a new feature called the Arcade. And what the Arcade will do is it'll allow players to play modes like 6v6 No Limits, which is basically the same as the current quick play that we have that doesn't have a hero limit, uh, 3v3 and 1v1 modes. Uh, also, weekly brawls are being completely transformed. They will also be added to the Arcade mode, and you will now be able to pick and choose which brawls you want to play from a playlist. No longer will brawls rotate out each week. Um, and it was also mentioned that when some brawls are temporarily retired due to low popularity, which is something that they're going to include in this new arcade mode, they're going to track the popularity of all these different modes and maybe retire out some things that aren't super popular. Um, uh, other brawls could be rotated in, including old seasonal brawls like Lucio Ball and Junkenstein's Revenge. So we may actually get to see those brawls come back um, at different points, um, even, you know, even when it's not a, a big seasonal event, so that's really interesting. While I do think that this is a very welcome and, and good compromise to the issue of competitive versus quick play, which I made a video about too, which, I don't know, maybe I'll see if I can put an iCard up there too for that. Uh, so long as players in the arcade aren't left feeling like they're playing second fiddle to quick play and competitive players. Um, which will of course now share the one hero limit. Uh, so if Arcade is going to succeed, it needs to be just as viable to the progression system as competitive or quick play and dish out the same EXP rewards. Um, they did say in the Overwatch What's New panel that players can get free loot boxes for playing the Arcade, and that's great, but I just don't want it to be treated like an afterthought that it's just something extra fun to do in the game like brawls have been as of late. It needs to be a way to play the game that's just as valid as playing competitive if you're aiming to level up. So, uh, we won't really know for sure, though, how this is going to affect the game un until it hits live. So, another new map that is going to be released um, 
uh, that will only be available in the arcade and uh, for s some smaller game modes is Eco Point Antarctica. Now, this is a map uh, of the location where May used to be stationed before she was forced to cryogenically freeze herself to survive an Arctic storm. Now, honestly, this is just as exciting as the somber reveal is to me because May is one of my absolute favorite heroes in Overwatch, really only second to Mercy, and I've been dying to delve deeper into her lore and her backstory, and that's what this new map is going to do. It is May's map. When Reinhardt got his own map with, uh, with Eichenwald, uh, I thought about how cool it would be to see some of my uh, other favorite heroes like Mei get her own map. And now it's finally happening. Mei has her own map, Eco Point Antarctica. I'm super, super excited to get it. Uh, unfortunately, though, as I said, this map will only be playable in the arcade mode for some of the smaller game modes like 3v3 or 1v1. Um, but it's still awesome nonetheless, and I can't wait to hop on it. Uh, the arcade, uh, as well as Eco Point Antarctica, will be hitting the PTR alongside Sombra this week. So, finally, uh, for Overwatch, Blizzard announced a new esports division for Overwatch called the Overwatch League that will be launching in 2017. Now, the Overwatch League is going to be structured very differently than your usual esports league like ESL or MLG. Uh, as, it's, as it combines structural elements of both esports and traditional sports like the NFL and the NBA into its core. Now, I have a lot to say about the Overwatch League, way too much for this video, so I think it deserves its own video about it. So if you want to check out what I think about the Overwatch League, click on the iCard on screen to go watch that video. Next, uh, StarCraft 2 got a short little segment for opening ceremonies, and in my opinion, this was the weakest series of announcements. Uh, the only real updates to the games that were announced was the final Nova Covert Ops pack uh, was said to be releasing later this month, and that Blizzard is working on new co-op missions and a new co-op commander, uh, which is the infected Terran Alexei Stukov. Uh, however, Blizzard spent the majority of its time on stage devoted to StarCraft II, uh, talking about something that had very little to do with the game. Basically, they announced that they've partnered up with Google to allow Google's advanced AI program, DeepMind, uh, to access StarCraft II's API and learn how to play it. So players can help teach DeepMind how to play StarCraft II simply by playing online multiplayer. Now, I think the problem with this announcement is that it's, an, is that it's audience is so niche. I think Blizzard figured that this would appeal to the StarCraft fans, but really the only people I can see getting excited about, excited about this are like nerds who are fans of AI research. Um, it was a neat announcement, especially how they spun it to make it sound like players could be helping DeepMind, uh, DeepMind to learn StarCraft 2 and that would bring about like great technological advances for humanity and stuff, but I feel like this was the wrong announcement for BlizzCon. This would have been much more effective and interesting of an announcement had it happened at like a Google Summit instead where people are more interested in the tech than the game being used to teach the tech, you know what I'm saying? So as far as announcements go, not really that great for StarCraft 2. Next, uh, Kao M Milker came out to talk about Heroes of the Storm, and I'd say that second to Overwatch, um, this had my second favorite announcements. So first, a new Brawl for Heroes was announced, Black Hearts Revenge. This is a special attack defense mode uh, with only one core on the battlefield, and one team tries to defend the core while the other team works with Black Heart to destroy it. Um, admittedly, I'm excited to try this Brawl uh, if I can. Black Hearts Bay is one of my favorite maps in Heroes, and to have a Brawl like this based around it is admittedly pretty interesting. So after that, two new heroes were announced to be coming to the Nexus, and that is, they're both from WoW, and they are Varian, Rin, and Ragnaros. Varian will be the game's first multi-class hero, and uh, he can be built a total of six different ways, depending on the talents you choose for him. And Ragnaros... Man, Ragnaros has lots of crazy crowd control abilities, but he also lets you take control of a fort, whether it's standing or not, and take its place. So, while I'm not a big fan of these heroes, like, lore-wise, 
I am pretty intrigued about their abilities and do want to try them out for myself. And I can't wait for them to actually hit the live game. So Varian hits this week uh, on the PTR and is set to release the week of November 15th for the live game, with Ragnaros coming later in December. So finally, along with some new skins that we got in, in, a, in a trailer, the Nexus Challenge was also announced. This is a new giveaway event that starts November 15th and ends January 4th. So the Nexus Challenge works like this. If you play 15 or more games with at least one of your Battle.net friends, you'll receive a special Oni Genji skin in Overwatch with a matching player icon and spray. And you'll also get an Oni Genji portrait for Heroes of the Storm, and you'll unlock Zarya in Heroes of the Storm as well. So, but if you want more, if you play 30 or more games with a friend, you'll also receive Kerrigan, Ariel, Greymane, and Li Ming in Heroes of the Storm, as well as the Orochi Hover Cycle Mount and a 30-day stim pack. Now, honestly, this was the coolest part of the Heroes announcement. I love the Oni Genji skin. It looks really awesome, and I've been wi I've been wanting to get Zarya and Kerrigan and Ariel for, for Heroes anyway, so this is the perfect opportunity for me to actually get it without having to grind for gold to buy them. Uh, the mount is also extremely gorgeous, and even though this giveaway doesn't include Tracer, uh, with the help of the 30-day stim pack that you'll get, I should be able to afford her no problem. So that's really cool. So the next game to get stage time was Hearthstone. Now admittedly, I do like Hearthstone, but unlike Blizzard's other games, I feel like even though it's free to play just like most of their other games are, this is the one where it's kind of like pay to win or pay to have fun. You can only really have fun with the default decks for so long because they get crushed often by players who can just afford to buy better packs and cards and you know also buy the adventures that give them new cards and it's the most expensive to get into I think but it's still a great game nonetheless so the only real big thing to show for Hearthstone this year was of course the new expansion they usually get a new expansion announced at BlizzCon uh, and that expansion was Mean Streets of Gadgetstan now admittedly though the trailer was kinda cringy but Hearthstone trailers usually are cringy, so it, it wasn't that big of a surprise to me. Uh, this expansion is set to take place in the port town of Gadgetstan, where you'll meet three distinct crime families, the Grimy Goons, the Jade Lotus, and the Cabal. Now, some of the new cards in this set include the Piranha Launcher Weapon, which is a gun that literally shoots piranhas. I know that sounds awesome. The Lotus Assassin, which has stealth and can also regain stealth whenever he kills an enemy. Uh, and the Cabal Talon Priest, which uh, has a battle cry that gives a friendly minion plus three health. So, Tri-Class cards have also been announced as a new type of card. Now, these are cards that will work in any one of three different deck classes, and each of the three crime families has their own set of them. For example, the Cabal uh, are mages, priests, and warlocks, so their Tri-Class cards can be run in any mage, priest, or warlock deck. Uh, an example of one of these cards is the Cabal Courier, which has a battle cry that lets you discover a mage, priest, or warlock card in your deck. And now obviously, since the Cabal Courier is considered to be all three of those types of cards, you could discover that card too. So also, each of the crime families has their own leader that you can add to your deck. So the leader of the Cabal was the one they um, introduced in the opening ceremonies, and it was the most interesting to me because of its effect. Um, his name is uh, Kazakus. Damn, that's a hard name to say. And his battle cry ability also uh, will this will allow you to create a custom spell if your deck has no duplicates. So this custom spell mechanic is extremely interesting. So to create one uh, when you play Kazakus. First, you choose one of three different mana crystal costs. I think it's like you can choose between either like one, like, you know, three, five, and ten, I do believe. Um, and once you do that, you can choose one of three different effects based on that uh, kind of, based on that mana cost that you've actually chosen. Um, and then after you choose that effect, you get to choose another effect out of three different choices. And once you're done with that, the card gets added right to your hand. It's admittedly pretty sweet. So 
Uh, I'm excited to actually play around with this, but, you know, the game is pretty expensive to get into, so I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to. But um, if I can, I'm going to be super stoked to, uh, to, to play these uh, kind of tri-class cards, especially, um, especially like some of the leaders like Kazakis. That's really, really interesting. So the last thing that was announced at the opening ceremonies uh, was some Diablo 3 news. Now, I'm not a big Diablo fan, but I am pretty excited for all the real Diablo fans out there to play around with the stuff that was announced at BlizzCon. So Frank Pierce um, came out and made some really cringeworthy jokes about the election, uh, but also revealed Blizzard's plans for the Diablo 20th anniversary. And they did not disappoint. Uh, Frank announced that they were recreating the Cathedral Dungeon from the original Diablo inside of Diablo 3. Complete with motion being locked to only 8 directions, original music and sounds, and graphic filters to make the game look grainy and pixelated just like it did 20 years ago. So the dungeon will also include all 4 bosses from the original game including the Lord of Terror himself at the bottom. So the anniversary patch hits Diablo's PTR this week. And I don't think that I'll be checking this out, but as I said, I am excited for the Diablo fans to get their hands on this and rejoice as Diablo celebrates its 20th anniversary. So next, Frank revealed that two new free zones will be added for everyone that owns Reaper of Souls. Um, and th these zones are called Shrouded Moors and Temple of the Firstborn. Uh, Frank also announced, this is the next, the, the other big thing that, um, that came out of the Diablo announcements, was a new character class, which is the Necromancer. And Frank revealed that this class is based off of the Necromancers in Diablo 2 and will be available in a character pack coming next year. So finally... Let's talk more World of Warcraft, alright? Another one of my favorite Blizzard games. And there was a lot of World of Warcraft stuff. It's funny, because there was a lot of stuff, but uh, they didn't really, you know, have any definitive release date for it, so that's probably why they didn't talk about it a lot in the opening ceremonies. But let's get into this. So, two new patches were announced at BlizzCon. The first patch is patch 7.1.5. And while this isn't a big content patch, it does include some new rewards and evergreen content. So there was no release date given, as I said, but it's coming soon. Blizzard soon. <laughs> so the first aspect of patch 7.1.5 to talk about are the time-walking versions of dungeons found in the Mists of Pandaria expansion, which will be level scaled to level 110. So your level 110 characters can enjoy them and it'll be challenging. Uh, it also brings back uh, Brawler's Guild so players can compete um, in 1v1 fights against computer opponents and you can play this mode to earn Brawler's Gold which can be used to buy items such as the Basilisk Mount. And the classic PvP arena Blade's Edge is also getting a graphical update. Now this mini patch will also include micro holidays which are basically just smaller holiday events that will last only like a couple weeks one of these micro holidays will be the Ankaraj remembrance day which will harken back to of course the first big content patch the gates of Ankaraj uh, that wow got back in 2006 so apart from some balance tweaks this patch will also bring back abilities that have since been removed from certain specializations such as traps for non-survival hunters and the second and much bigger content patch that's coming is patch 7.2 which is called the tomb of Sargeras and it will take players to the place where many Warcraft heroes died in the series of events leading up to Legion's release and continues the story of the class hall campaigns that kicked off in this expansion this will add new quests and tasks the player can complete for gold and gear. Now this patch will also allow players to create bases on the Broken Shore, and meanwhile, the Burning Legion will begin their attack on other Broken Isle zones, where you can un uh, when you unlock the invasions, it all culminates in a three-player scenario where you battle on a Legion airship. That sounds friggin' awesome. 
So flying mounts will be usable in this patch as well if you're trying to use them in the Broken Isles. Patch 7.2 will let you do that. Um, and also, each class is getting their own unique flying mount that you can earn by completing the Class Hall campaign. Uh, a new raid for players level 10 to 25 will also hit this patch, and they'll feature nine new bosses, one of which being the legendary character Kill Jaden. So, a new five player dungeon is also being added in this patch, and it's called Cathedral of Eternal Night. And for players of Retur Return to Karazhan, the dungeon will now be split into two instances which will let players decide if they want to queue up with random players or not. Um, patch 7.2 will also introduce brawls similar to what Blizzard is doing with Overwatch, Heroes, and Hearthstone, uh, challenging or er, changing the rules and offering unique fights. And the final announcement for patch 7.2 was new traits coming for artifact weapons. You will be able to put new points into old traits as well as uh, all new abilities that can unlock new perks. Now, order resources will be able to be spent to unlock more artifact power, which you'll need to unlock these traits. So, new artifact weapon quest lines will also hit this patch, which lets players unlock a new appearance. Um, and as I said, Patch 7.2 did not have a release date, but it is said to be following soon after Patch 7.1.5. And the <laughs> final thing to share from BlizzCon and World of Warcraft was a little teaser of upcoming content that had players taking the fight directly to the Burning Legion on their home world of Argus. Now, whether this is an upcoming patch or a new expansion, we don't know. But I'm super excited to try out all of this stuff. This is a lot to take in, and admittedly, I don't know a lot about what it's all about because I'm still admittedly a little bit of a noob to World of Warcraft. But I'm excited to try it out when I get my subscription to WoW back online and I can purchase a uh, Legion. So that is all the news I had to share for, uh, with you guys from BlizzCon. Uh, I had a blast watching it. I can't wait to get my BlizzCon uh, key art shirt in the mail uh, when that when that ships out to me. Um, I'm excited to, you know, try Sombra on the PTR, I'm excited to try, uh, you know, all the new Heroes stuff, it's gonna be uh, a really fantastic year for Blizzard, I can't wait to do it, so remember guys, if you liked the video, leave a like, if you didn't, leave a dislike, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, I'm Mr. Mercy, peace everyone.